I purchased a dragon, but I can't find it. I found it. I found the dragon. This is probably the ugliest dragon I've ever seen. And to make a long story short, um, about a year ago, Black Magic Craft did a video where he purchased a, a dollar store dragon and used his dollar store tools to make the dragon look good. I don't think his dragon cost just a dollar, but this one cost me 60 cents. It used to be one dollar at the dollar store, but I found it at a flea market. <laughs> Because the dollar store had sold out of these and I've been looking for one, but I found it at the flea market and 60 cents, I thought it was an okay price. I'm not going to do what Jeremy did over at Black Magic Craft to just use dollar store paints. What I want to see is if I can take this derpy, ugly, mother freaking dragon and make it look good. And the thing is, I kind of like this derpy look when you can move the head, turn it, spin it around, like these wings are flappy and you can take them off and I'm not going to fill any gaps, I'm not going to change anything on the dragon, I'm just going to make my best trying to make this look like a good dragon. Is it possible? I have no idea. I have to clean it up, prime it and then let's just start painting and see where it goes. So the miniature is primed but it still looks kind of derpy. It's better than it was five minutes ago, but it's obviously still quite bad. Especially around the face, like it, there are some teeth missing and things like that. So I might have to sculpt some of it using the brush to kind of draw in things. Yeah, let's do what we can with what we have. I was a bit inspired by a dinosaur that Angel Giraldes painted some months ago with a beige and red-brown patterned dinosaur. So I'm going to take that, but make this project something fun that I can just experiment with, just slapping paints on. So I start off by just adding all of these colors onto the palette so I can go back and forth and experiment. And if something doesn't look the way I want it to be, I can just adjust on the fly. That's one of the good things about using a wet palette. So it's a strong recommendation if you're starting out painting. If the video ends without the model being finished, at least you know I died happy painting miniatures. One like, one prayer. So I started off by sketching out some nice patterns on this dragon. I start off with these beige tones, but you can start with any color you want if you want to do something similar. I'm currently making a mix of Sandry Dust and Steel Legion Drab and just slapping these colors on wherever I think I'm going to want to have these in the end. But these first sketches are not set in stone, so if I want to change anything later on, I'm gonna do that as well. I then do the same thing with the dark reddish brown that I want to have as a base coat for all of my brown parts on the dragon. I start off with the color Doombull Brown from Citadel Color. And when sketching out colors on a big miniature like this, I'm not using any expensive brushes or anything like that. I'm using a cheap brush I ordered from Wish. Any dollar store brush will work, just use something that's a bit larger than what you use for painting details and something that you're not too afraid of that it might break or something like that. Just use something cheap that you can slap around paint with and have fun. So the first base layer is put out there. We now need to start sketching out the volumes of the dragon. What this means is that I'm trying to make things look like they are out in an environment, which means that this one, for example, that is out in a bright daylight, will have the lightest points of it being on the parts that are closest to the light source. And in this case, of course, it's the sun, so everything that is raised, everything that is closer to the sky will be brighter than things that are underneath the dragons or in shadow. 
I'm not using a specific color for this. I'm blending the colors on my wet palette using the brighter beige colors or bone colors, if you will. So we highlighted the beige parts a bit, but uh, we need to add some tonal variation to the reddish brown skin as well. So let's go ahead and do that. This one is a little bit more difficult because the brighter parts would reflect a lot of light if they're angled towards the sun, but the darker brownish parts won't reflect as much light. And I kind of want the brown parts to react sort of like freckles or something that's a bit darker. So I'm going to just stipple around a lot of different colors in here. If there are some parts that are really raised, like some bulges or something, I will add a bit of a brighter brown tone. But mostly I will just stipple around different tones to create a great variation, which a lizard or a dragon maybe naturally would have. The colors I have on the palette is Deathclaw Brown and Rhinox Hide, both from Citadel Color. And in the midst of doing that, I just started painting the tongue for no reason. I'm using the color Bugman's Glow to create the base here. And just highlighting it using some paled flesh. And then jumping back into the brown parts of the dragon again. I'm mixing in some oranges and some sunny skin tone from Vallejo as well. This will create a nice color contrast boost to the browner parts. And then just stippling this onto the dragon. Once again, just having fun, going nuts, back and forth with different colors. I will blend all of this together more in a later step, so don't be too worried if it doesn't look perfect at this stage. And this to me is the fun part of a project like this, just having a chance to just practice and try out new things and just go nuts with the brush. That way I feel like I develop a lot as a painter. Look, it's all, <laughs> it's starting to look like a decent dragon, but it's not finished yet. I don't know, would you play with this dragon in your Dungeons and Dragons games? So I'm going to do two things with the airbrush now. The first of them is something I like to call after shading or post shading. What this does, it helps me create volumes on the miniature, shading all of the parts that are, for example, under the body or, or when you have like textures that's rounded. If I used the airbrush and spray from underneath, these uh, shadowy parts would be enhanced, so it creates some really good volume on the miniature with almost no time put into it. I usually do this with inks because they are high in saturation but not in luminosity. So for this case I'm using the Sepia Verdus ink from Green Stuff Worlds. And yeah, the effect is strong in tone but not in brightness. So, so this is a good thing to use inks for. And now with the after shading done, I want to add some color pop to kind of blend everything together. This is kind of like glazing but using the airbrush. So I'm adding a lot of water into the airbrush and a little bit of ink. This time I'm using an orange ink and it will be like spraying a glaze on top of the miniature. This doesn't just only add a bit of a color pop but it also blends everything together. As you can see it's starting to look really nice. It's starting to look almost like a real thing. The colors aren't separated but they're starting to feel like one part of the miniature. So the first step of airbrushing is done. We did lose a bit of details on the highlights mostly of the miniature. So we're going to go back and just add like the final dot highlight using a, a really good brush so I get good control on the top parts of the miniature and everything that would be highlighted naturally, of course. And that would be things that are pointing towards light source, so things that are from a top.
going to add back some of the browns to the top of the miniature, just some darker patterns to kind of add more to the texture, feeling it like a lizard and like a dinosaur or something like that. So I added just some stipples of Rhinox hide again, the darkest of the browns I have on the palette, just to make it look a bit more varied on the skin. So guys, the miniature is getting close to done, but now we need to paint the eyes of the miniature. So, and I'm going to do like the classical dragon eyes that are going to be on fire. So it's going to be like yellow hot in the center. And then when we go to the edge, it's going to be like a dark red. And then we're going to have the, like the cat eye uh, pupils. So it's going to be like these, I don't know what you call them, fish shaped <laughs> eyes. And yellow is one of these colors that really needs a bright base color to start with. So I base everything with a grayish tone called Rakarth Flesh. And then to the center of the eye, I'm adding whites. So I'm just going brighter and brighter and then whitest in the center. And then I add my yellows. But apparently it was a great idea to start painting some of the teeth of the dragon first. I'm just jumping back and forth as you see and these teeth are painted the same way as I painted the beige skin, starting with a darker beige and then just going up to white to the brightest points. I also felt like the tongue was a bit flat so I added a bit of a red ink glaze to the tongue. This has gave it a bit more depth, it looks more like a real tongue now. So back to painting the eyes with yellow first. I then add oranges to the side of this yellow and then go red and then a dark black reddish on the outer sides of the eyes. The last thing that I paint is of course the pupils, I'm just using straight up black and adding that to the miniature. As a final touch I'm adding a light reflection to the eye, this really sells the effect of the miniature being out in a real environment. I'm just using a pure white and slabbing a small dot on the center of the eye on the side of the pupil. But there's another trick I can use to add even more of that fiery touch to the eyes. As the final touch I'm adding fluorescent color, this time from Vallejo, but different brands have these type of colors. They just reflect the light differently, I don't know why they do it, but it really looks more fiery when I glaze a bit of this orange on the skin of it as sort of like an OSL effect and on the center of the eye. I almost forgotten, I haven't painted the wings yet. Um, I'm going to do the same thing as I did when I after shaded the miniature in the earlier stages, but this time I think I'm going to use green and then maybe as like the first color and then I'm going to add some blacks into it to create even harder shadows. And if you're liking this video so far, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel, of course, that really helps me out. And, and it also means you'll find out whenever I release a new video with hobby content or painting tutorials or just hobby tips. So I don't think I could make the connection point between the wings and the body look like a real part of the body so my idea was to paint it gold and to make it look kind of like a golden saddle that's on the dragon and to give the wings some shape i just highlighted them going brighter with the beige tone i didn't have to be too careful about blending these colors i just wanted to go a bit higher and then we blend it later with the airbrush As I mentioned before, I'm using some Veridis green to create the first shade and coloring part of this wing part of the dragon. To make it more like a glaze and thin it out a bit, I use a lot of water in the airbrush and just a few drops of the ink. With the previous color still in the airbrush, I add a few drops of black ink to shade even more on the edges of the wings and in the shadowy parts of it. This really gives a nice final punch to them. So guys, this is where we started and just look where we ended up. 
I'm feeling really proud about the end result here and especially considering how poor the sculpt of this miniature or toy dragon really is. I finally feel like this is something that I could actually use in a game of Dungeons and Dragons or something similar like that, where I don't need to have a specific size or a large dragon where I can tell my own story and do something, write something, write a story myself. And I have a little bit of a challenge for you because I enjoy this so much. I want you to try out to bring out one of your old toys, maybe an old action figure or an old toy dinosaur or a dragon and repaint it. Try to make it look good. I had so much fun doing this. Tell me in the comment what you would like to repaint. Give me your best ideas and maybe I'll use one of them for a video in the future. And guys, making these videos wouldn't be possible without all of my awesome Patreon supporters. At the time of recording, we're only like $70 away from reaching that first goal, which means that you guys, as viewers, make sure that one day every week is already paid. I don't have to be dependent on YouTube ads or sponsored videos, and that makes me incredibly happy. So keep supporting there, go check out the Patreon if you feel like you get something out of these videos or maybe you learn something or just have a bit of fun. I hope you liked the video guys, as said before, don't forget to subscribe and have a great day, bye.